Welcome back to the Q&A sessions of Vivimat. Now it's Karsten's turn to interview Karina Moerstein and Armand Kahn about their work on thin carbon films. Coatings is a peer-reviewed journal of coatings and surface engineering published online by MDPI on a monthly basis. Yeah, first of all, I think I also have to admit which is my favorite. So strawberry is the favorite. And I want to go to Karina now. Karina, I really like your presentation. Um, <laughs> maybe this has to do with the fact that I just read the publication as well, just uh, recently, because I submitted with your supervisor, Martin, <laughs> a DFG proposal. Let's keep fingers crossed. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Karina. first, I think we have to deal with the ice cream flavor. What is your favorite? <laughs> Sorry um... for that. No problem. I would say my favorite ice cream flavor is Stracciatella. So uh, vanilla with chocolate sprinkles. <laughs> yeah, very good. So I see we have a good blend right now. So coming to the scientific part, um, you were talking about uh, carbon films. And um, I saw on one of the slides that you talked about this airbrush. Um, interesting, yeah. because we also want to introduce this airbrush um, uh, method uh, for, for some of the uh, films. We actually recently discussed with Manel, uh, who is watching um, also for bismuth uh, sulfide films and maxines to, to use this technique. Um, I have a question regarding how easy is it actually to make this kind of suspension. Um, have you had a lot of trial and error with uh, all the alcohols on board or you had a recipe before you said okay this works best or how was your experience with um, setting up um, the mixture for the airbrush um, gun how is that going okay um well i have to say that actually the graphite suspension we used is commercially available because we wanted to use really a suspension that is comparable to industrial applications on, or how it's used in industrial applications so I haven't tried, um, yeah, I just tried this suspension and it actually worked. But when you work with an airbrush, you just have to watch out for some things. Um, one is the viscosity. I mean, maybe if you have also worked with an airbrush uh, in your free time as a hobby, you know that the, the liquid or the suspension you're going to use should have a viscosity similar to milk, actually. And um, you have to watch out for the, what's it called, like the needle you're going to use. If it's too small, it will be, um, get stuck really quickly, mm -hmm. um, which is also a, a problem we sometimes had. So uh, if, if the suspension was, so to say, uh, standing around for a longer period of time, the particles agglomerated a little bit. And if we, we use that directly, um, sometimes the airbrush would get stuck um, mm -hmm. or some part particles would get stuck um, but the, uh, we could also uh, we could really quickly remove them with acetone so, but you just have to take apart the whole pistol and uh, to avoid that we usually uh, put the suspension in an ultrasonication bath for like around one hour um, so that the agglomerated particles disappear again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for the advice and, and lucky you that you could use at least a commercial one yeah. <laughs> because we are now trying to figure out what is best for, for the max scenes and, and other stuff what we do. It seems to be a bit more complicated, um, but at least you're right with the needles. We already discussed that within the group. It might get stuck uh, some stuff inside and yeah, ultrasonication can definitely help. Um, maybe another quick one. Um, you, you mentioned on one of the slides that you increased the roughness um, to a value. I just noted that down, 81 plus minus 4 nanometers. And you said this is comparable to the roller bearing applications. So have you measured something before or is it is it really comparable from the, from the surface roughness um, to, to these values? I saw you increase it by a factor of 7 or, or something around yeah. that right yeah exactly so um we actually measured a real bearings or one one of our uh, project partners um he he knew what bearings he's going to use in his test rig and mm -hmm. um he gave me one of those and i measured the surface roughness of uh, of them but i only focused on uh, two roughness parameters so the uh, sa the uh, the 
metric mean value and the um, SZ value. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I, I want to stress the fact that, of course, the roughness will not be exactly the same on our system, so on our iron plates, but it is just much more comparable and also much nearer in, uh, in regard of the roughness than the usual, um, like the usual substrates you see in, in different literature studies, because they are mainly conducted on really, really smooth um, mm -hmm. surfaces, where which is also what I did in the start, in the beginning of my studies. Um, but of course, uh, there, so, we, we saw that then the, the lubrication mechanism is actually quite different. <laughs> so uh, I didn't talk about that much in detail in the talk because it's something uh, we are currently investigating and writing a paper about. But um, if you have a really smooth surface and these like perfect graphene layers on top of it, um, they will be easily sheared against one another which is the so-called deck of cards model, which is mm -hmm. um, still popular. But we have seen if you have a high surface roughness, and in our case, due to the application with the airbrush um, graphene layers that are more or less randomly oriented, um, this mechanism does not apply, uh, but we observe something different instead. <laughs> Maybe another quick question because it just fits in in this in this moment to this context um, regarding the airbrush again. Uh, so mm -hmm. is it is it also favorable basically to have a higher roughness because like of a mechanical interlocking? Is the adhesion then better or is it basically bad when you do the airbrush? Because I guess you can rub them easily off by by your uh, thumb or by the nail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it didn't make a difference whether I used a, a mirror-like substrate or a rougher substrate in, in terms okay. of adhesion, which is also what we investigated. But um, on the, at least in our case, on the rougher substrate, we just observed that the graphite gets trapped in the trenches from the polishing process. And mm -hmm. we also formed a thin carbon layer right in the sliding interface, which increased the tribological performance uh, drastically and especially the lifetime of the counterbody, or yeah, the lifetime perfect. of the layer and yeah, the wear on, on the counterbody. Yeah, perfect. So some good points for me to keep in mind. Thank you, Karina, for the moment. I have another questions later on. Um, I would like to take the opportunity to welcome Aman Khan um, to the session today. So Arman already informed me and Stefan before that um, he will be a little bit um, joining. He will join us a little bit later. So welcome, Arman, um, to the Q&A event. Um, and maybe if Stefan agrees, um, it would be good if I could also um, give him some question first uh, before we continue with the other ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget so, though, Aman, to give him the most important one first. Yes, yes, I have that. I'm completely aware of that, Stefan, don't <laughs> worry. So, Aman, <laughs> Stefan started this uh, crazy game with asking for the favorite ice or flavor for the ice cream. So you must first answer this very decisive question. What is your favorite flavor for ice cream? Yeah, hi, everyone. Can you hear me fine? Yes, all fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry for being late. Uh, no I assume that's one of the that's the most difficult question you're going to ask. It, it is. It is in fact. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would pick uh, butterscotch. Oh, okay, good, yeah. good. We have uh, really a huge variety of different ice creams today. So, Aman, um, now just just jokes by sight. Um, a couple of questions. I also like very much your presentation, and um, I was I was looking at um, at some of the slides uh, really in detail. Uh, you you presented um, this um, different procedure between thermal and friction induced films. Um, you also talked about the polymerization of of the carbonaceous species. And I was reminding myself of some paper, I think it was, um, not sure if I pronounced the person correctly, but uh, Hermans in 1958 already, 
um, uh, he reported on yeah, carbonaceous polymer films or friction polymers. Um, and um, I was wondering a little bit because sometimes the in situ formation of, of carbonaceous films can be detrimental or can be good. Um, I, I give you an example where I think it's not so good. If we look at varnish, um, where you also have a kind of a sticky, crusty, um, carbonaceous particles and, and oil byproducts uh, sticking to a surface is something that we do not want. And uh, now the question is, um, if, if you have this kind of um, popping up, um, this polymerization of the carbonaceous species, um, you showed in, in your diagram between the, the, the thermal and the shear induced or the friction induced uh, mechanism it's very similar and i was surprised uh, because i was expecting actually that there is a bigger difference between the thermal and the friction induced one can you quickly comment on that and um how do you how do you see that yeah so um good point that you made um so what we are studying is uh, forming these kind of triboforms from a metastable lubricant additive. So that was uh, for others I'm, I'm speaking. Uh, so like you said, you can form these uh, 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 kind of triboforms from two pathways, right? They can be uh, purely mechanochemical or they can be thermal, right? And the idea is to provide the activation barriers or uh, the chemical reactions that are taking place. Um, so what we have is a three carbon metastable component and uh, we can break it apart either by uh, purely thermal means, uh, which is what I'm calling uh, uh, as a thermal product in the presentation. Um, and the other one is uh, by friction induced process. And um, as much as I would like it to be purely frictional process, there is also a thermal component associated because uh, there's always some kind of heat generated in any kind of frictional test, right? So I would call that not as a purely frictional product, but somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's why, uh, I mean, the kind of uh, 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 the simulation power comes, comes into play where we can, you know, control the temperature and uh, do some of the crazy um, um, sliding simulations. Mm -hmm. um, so in our experiment, what we did was uh, we actually did a very thorough analysis of uh, uh, starting with Raman spectroscopy, then moving on to FTIR and then NMR and then whatnot, right? Uh, all those are mentioned. Uh, so from all that analysis, we found that uh, if we are providing the um, um, external energy that is required to pass those uh, barriers, right? You will end up with a similar product, at least in our case. Um, and uh, we sort of complemented it uh, with uh, some molecular dynamic simulations which were reactive in nature so that um, we can capture the bond formation and bond breaking um, as well as the polymerization reaction that we uh, that we were seeing from uh, uh, from the uh, experimental results um, uh, so yeah i mean it may seem counterintuitive from some of the uh, uh, results that have been already published. Uh, but uh, in our case, we found that uh, they were very similar from the analysis tools that we used. Mm -hmm. I found does that, that article. Uh, does that answer uh, your question? Yeah, yeah, that's for the answer of my question. I, I found an article from 2017 by, by Lawrence D. Marks, and I think Emily Hoffman is the name, um, from mm -hmm. Northwestern. Uh, are yeah, they yeah, yeah also on board in this project or because it's very much related also to these uh, you know graphitic film or carbon carbon films i think it was um something across carbon films or something like this um are they on board in the project or is that just uh, randomly mm. popping up no uh, i mean no they they are actually in the material science department at our university uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that was a separate uh, uh, study so so we actually uh, don't work uh, um, together on this okay. uh, but uh, part of the motivation for our study was actually that paper that you are mentioning and uh, okay. uh, like you said you can have different components I think uh, if you take uh, even um, coal right I would say that that is also a, some kind of carbon product um, yeah, yeah. and like you said uh, you can generate unwanted products as well 
uh, which uh, you know will exhibit similar characteristics when you go on to take, for example, Raman spectroscopy. Uh, mm -hmm. Does not mean which was one of the major uh, messages. I don't know if I was able to give that away in the presentation, but uh, that was one of the major uh, message uh, or the takeaway message from my uh, from that work was that uh, do not um, you know label something that it looks something like DLC from the mm -hmm. Raman signal to be you know this Lubricio mm -hmm. film which helps in friction and wear reduction. Uh, because it is not what it looks like. Yeah. yeah, very good. Excellent. I liked it. First, I would like to come back to Karina. Um, so, Karina, I have a quick question to you. First of all, I was wondering if you have also done Raman spectroscopy uh, regarding your films. Because I was wondering, because you can determine, of course, a defect index, and it would be nice to see after your rubbing experiments um, how actually your carbonaceous species is changing. Have you have you planned that, or have you already done that, or how is the the state of the art with the Raman part in your in your research? Yeah, so I did a small Raman study, um, but only on the influence of the applied normal force. So in the paper, I investigated three different normal forces. And exactly as you say, uh, with the Raman, you can see the, the amount of defects if you compare the different samples with each other. And uh, we saw that uh, with an increase in the normal force, the, the amount of defects in the layer increased as well after the experiments. But um, I will conduct some further um, Brahman spectroscopy studies um, also on, the, on some other samples. So to see, um, I also have to analyze the thin carbon layer that was formed on the rougher substrates. And um, currently I'm also working on the an investigation of the influence of humidity on graphite lubrication and there um, of course the Raman spectroscopy will come in handy as well. Mm -hmm. Okay so are you uh, from your PhD which which year is that first second third year of PhD? Where I started my now? third year. You yeah. started your third year so yes. you're actually approaching so to say roughly the end of the phd <laughs> i hope depends so on, yes <laughs> depends on the supervisor i know but uh, i i know martin and i think he has a uh, um, he has that fully under control so um, yeah any 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 further plans regarding your your topic uh, or to conclude your your phd work um, um what, so, what, yeah. what have you planned yeah um so one thing is now to wrap up this whole uh, humidity influence study that we're doing, um, which is why we're currently writing a paper. And then as an next big thing is just to uh, make the transition from sliding friction to rolling friction, because in our um, project, together with our project partners, we want to uh, investigate the application in rolling bearings. And of course, there is the motion is rolling and not sliding. So we'll see whether um, we can still observe this, this thin carbon layer or if it's only formed under sliding friction and um, how the transfer film behaves uh, also under different um, applied normal loads, etc. cetera. Uh, do you have, by the way, access to a mini traction machine or a twin disc machine? for studying the influence on the sliding to rolling ratio, because this is exactly what you say, to, to see how it changes from pure sliding to pure rolling and also to, to understand the intermediates. Um, any, any access to that or how, how have you planned to do this? Or do you use a bearing test brick um, to do more applied tests? Uh, well, what is the plan here? Um, we don't have access to such a machine, but uh, we have in our group an uh, it's called a holography trimometer, where you can um, like investigate the change of the surface topography during the experiment after each slide, and we just modified it so that um, we like reconstructed an adapter that is t attached directly to the force sensor, where we um, have like a spherical bearing, no spherical 
part to simulate this um, the sphere and it's able to move rather freely so um so i i conducted some first experiments and um of course in this setup we can't tune the um slide to roll ratio mm -hmm. um but it will be uh, sufficient i think to to compare them um with the experiments of our project partner and so actually the institute for product development the epec at kit um constructed a whole test rig where they implemented real bearings and um, lubricated them with the graphite suspension and um, there they can also investigate everything on a much larger scale yeah sounds great so um thanks again um very nice presentation and uh, we all wish you all the best uh, for the final stage of the phd Uh, what we can do because Valentin wrote in the chat and that is a uh, good idea um, he watched the presentation of Ingrid, Tobias and Karina ah. and uh, he has a simple question for Karina and uh, some general thoughts and comments for Ingrid and Tobias so I would like to hand over to Valentin um, to ask and to comment um, what he has planned so please Valentin go ahead okay thank you so uh, I found your presentations very interesting I haven't had time to watch the other ones but uh I'm planning on. So for Karina, I just wanted to ask you about the paintbrush. Uh, if it's mm -hmm. difficult to control the thickness on the samples. And uh, second, I think at one point you say that uh, you observe higher was it friction and also wear when you have a thicker coating. And uh, I think you say that you can found this phenomena also with different other coatings, not, not only graphite, but are they also produced by this paintbrush technique? Okay, so in regards of your first question, um, it actually wasn't diffi that dif difficult to control the thickness of the layer with the airbrush, because in our case, it's not, I didn't make like one thick layer, because then uh, we observed that there were, um, what do you call them, like mm, scratches, no, not scratches, uh, but the, um, the layer ruptured. Um, because it was too thick. Um, so we just did multiple thin layers and um, because of the high uh, content of solvents uh, in between the, the sweeps that, that I did, most of the uh, solvent evaporated immediately, immediately. So to tune the thickness, I just had to tune the number of sweeps I did with the average pistol. And in regards of your your second question actually i didn't find that many papers that use an airbrush pistol for the application i have to admit um i found one where it was used um in the application for a solar cell uh, so not really <laughs> comparable and for usually for other solid you lubricants they are applied onto the substrate with a different um, method uh, but usually these methods are also much more expensive or need more preparation of the sample than with the airbrush. Oh. So you make uh, sweeps to avoid cracking. I think that's the word you were looking for. Yeah. The cracking. Of the, Thanks. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay. Ah yes. Okay. Okay. I see. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> 